everyone this is Darsh Jitalia welcome to my channel Darshonium. In today's video we will be learning the most important but a very basic topic. We will be learning the important conventions needed while writing a chemical equation. So let us consider a chemical reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So if I take a magnesium strip and I burn it in the air. It reacts with the oxygen in the air and results into formation of a white color ash of magnesium oxide. So magnesium and oxygen both of them reacted and hence they both are called as reactants. Now let us define what are reactants. The substances taking part in a chemical reaction are called as reactants. As magnesium and oxygen both of them reacted right and hence they are reactants and they resulted into formation of magnesium oxide which becomes the product. Now let us define products. The substances formed due to the chemical reactions are called as products. So here magnesium oxide becomes the product. These chemical reactions can be represented in two ways. One is word equation and second one is chemical equations. Let us define what are word equations. The simple representation of a chemical reaction using words is called as word equation. For example, this reaction can be written as magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide. Simple. Now let us define what is a chemical equation. The simple representation of a chemical reaction using chemical formulae is called as chemical equation. So this same word equation can be written as Mg plus O2 gives MgO. MgO is magnesium oxide. So Mg ka valency is 2, oxide ka valency is 2, 2 ones are 2 ones are crisscrossing and we will get magnesium oxide. So if you don't know how to calculate these formulas, please watch my second video of application of valency chart. So these are the two ways in which a chemical reaction can be represented, word equation and chemical equation. Now let us start up with the important conventions needed to be followed in writing a chemical equation. Point number one. The reactants are always on the left hand side and the products are always on the right hand side. Point number two. The reactants and the products are separated by using an arrow in which the head of the arrow is towards the product and it also indicates the direction of the reaction. Point number three. If there are two or more reactants or two or more products, they are separated by using a plus sign. As here you can see magnesium and oxygen, there are two reactants, right? And hence they are separated by using a plus sign. Point number four. If there are any conditions involved in the reaction, for example, temperature conditions, pressure conditions, catalyst present, heating, etc., they are needed to be mentioned on the arrow. As I said in the explanation, we are taking a magnesium strip and we will burn it in the air. So here there is heating involved and hence on the arrow we will write a small delta which represents heating. Fifth point. In order to make the reaction more informative, we will write the physical states of the reactants and the products. For example, solid co will represent it as S in the subscript. Liquid ka L, gases ka G. Also you will find sometimes a notification of AQ. AQ stands for aqueous solutions which is they are prepared in water. Last and final point, sixth point is if there is an evolution of gas, we will represent it by an upward arrow. So if there is a gas evolved in the product, we'll re we can represent it by upward arrow. And if there is a precipitation form, what is precipitation? Insoluble solid formed in the reaction, then we'll represent it by downward arrow. So it's gas is evolved, upward arrow, if there is precipitation, downward arrow. So these were the six important conventions that were, that you need to follow in order to write a chemical equation. Let us take one more example. We will react silver with hydrochloric acid. If we react silver with hydrochloric acid, they both react and form silver chloride and hydrogen gas. This is just for example. 
So this can be represented in word equation as silver plus hydrochloric acid gives silver chloride and hydrogen gas. Right? Now this can be represented in chemical equation as silver is Ag plus hydrochloric acid is HCl reacts and forms silver chloride AgCl and hydrogen gas H2. Now we know silver is in solid state so in order to make it more informative we will write S in the subscript because solid it is in the solid form. Then hydrochloric acid is a liquid. So we'll write it in the liquid form. So we'll write a small L. Now silver chloride is a precipitate. So according to the rule, we'll mention a downward arrow and hydrogen gas is evolved, right? So it is represented by an upward arrow. So this is how we have to follow the conventions in order to write a chemical equation. So this is very important and you need to follow in each and every reactions. So if you like my video, please smash out the like button. If you have any queries or any doubts or anything that you want to ask or if there are any suggestions, please comment right below. Thank you for giving me all your time. I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you.